Good day. This series of videos describes Niagara's Welland Canal, a fun place to watch ships up close. In this part, our tour continues to visit some spots from south of Lock 1 up to Lock 7 and the Thorold Tunnel. This first spot to park is on the Welland Canal Parkway at Linwell. There are two things to talk about here. The first is 250 yards north. The Howard L. Shaw stern anchor, it was ship was a bulk carrier built in 1900 and taken out of service in 1969. Until 1932, it was too big for the Welland Canal. It was, uh, it was used on the upper Great Lakes. This was the middle ship in the breakwater at Ontario Place. The other thing associated with this spot is something that's not here. Originally, when the canal was designed, there was supposed to be a bridge for Church Street, which was later renamed to Linwell in 1960. So there used to be a road here. The original expectation was everywhere where the canal cuts a road, they're going to put a bridge. So there was a bridge planned here, and they built the pilings and the concrete in 1915, but later on, 1923, 1924, oh, we're not building a bridge there. It's only half a mile up to Lakeshore. So there was a little bit of uproar, but they didn't end up building a bridge. The next spot is on the Welland Canal Parkway between Linwell and Scott. Across the canal, from here you can see a complex of greenhouses. These are part of a flower nursery. This is one beneficiary of irrigation water coming from the canal, in this case via a private pump and irrigation system. Niagara has a longer growing season than many parts of Canada, and the many greenhouses across the farmland extend the growing process and so permit a wider variety of plants. From here, you can also see a green navigation buoy, maybe 100 yards away. These are tethered in place. Some buoys have a flashing light at night, as this one does. So they have a battery within the buoy and a light detector so that they only flash in the dark. Some buoys, although not this buoy, have an AIS transmitter built in. For example, the ship approach to Buffalo Harbor on marine traffic, you can see four or five of such buoys. We are at the parking lot on Carlton Street, right beside Bridge 3A, the Carlton Bridge, and right beside Lock 2. The lock and bridge features are similar to the things we covered for Lock 1, including even the static bridge, the electric generator, and the spillway.
But Lot 2 and the canal upstream are elevated above the surrounding land on both sides of the canal for a mile and a half from Carleton south to East Chester Avenue. Carlton angles downhill from here. You can see that the water level in the canal is several yards above the surrounding land. Parallel to the canal is the Welland Canal Trail. Let me tell you about my favorite spot to watch ships. Around the east side of this building, which is right beside the bridge, the sidewalk over the bridge goes behind this building on the way to the south side of the bridge. The ships come within four yards of this walking path. They tower over me. The only kid danger here is the rolling pedestrian barricade at the end. While it's closed, people shouldn't lean on it or stick their fingers through the fence. Carlton Bridge, Bridge Trivity A, is a rolling bascule bridge. In 1968, a Japanese freighter struck and destroyed the original Bridge 3. The canal was closed for three days as they cleared the debris. The replacement bridge, the current bridge, was constructed in only 18 months. The pedestrian railing that you see is 1960s utilitarian, not the fancy scroll work designed in the 1920s of the Lakeshore Bridge we saw earlier. Far on the East Shore, you can see an orange triangle sign on a utility pole. This is the back range light for a section of the ship channel. The front range light is a green buoy. Just south of the Orange Triangle, you can see a white pipe coming out of the water and entering brush. This is the end of a siphon. There's a pump at the top to get rid of any air bubble at the start of the season, but after that, it's just a gravity siphon. This is for irrigation. At the bottom of the hill, the pipe empties the water into a ditch that runs along the south side of Carlton and flows east for over a mile supplying irrigation to several businesses. The water regulators in ancient Sumeria would recognize the system of a main supply line and service lines to each farm.
This spot is on the Welland Canal Parkway just south from East Chester. This is the nearest parking for both the high level Skyway Bridge and further the low level Queenston Road Bridge, both of which you can see from here. So let's look around. There's a seasonal chip stand across the road with washrooms. Looking north between the road and the canal, you can see a fenced off area extending 100 yards north. This is the remains of the abandoned Wharf 3. It is no longer usable. Another feature within that fenced area is a tree that's been gnawed by a beaver. In the winter, across the water, you may pick out a blue and white water pump on the far shore. In the summer, you might not see it because of the greenery. The water pump pumps water from the canal into a pipe for irrigating farms a couple of miles east in Niagara on the lake. At the north end of the parking lot, facing north, there is a sign for ships. It's the bridge whistle sign for Bridge 4. If the yellow light is not flashing, then the ship radios in to request to raise the Queenston Street Bridge. There's no whistle sign required for the high level bridge, the Skyway, because it doesn't move. There's nothing to raise. I've got some pictures here of erosion along the side of the canal due to wave action. Since I took these pictures, the seaway management has filled these in. This has been a continuous process since the canal was constructed. They can put riprap. Riprap is these rocks, these football-sized or foot-sized rocks to reduce erosion. Looking past the Skyway Bridge, ignoring the Skyway for now, you can see the low-level Queenston Street Bridge, which is also called Bridge 4, which is also called the Homer Bridge. This is a double leaf bascule bridge. It was originally part of the QAW and was opened in 1936. This bascule bridge looks different from the two we've already seen because the counterweights are underneath. So the Queenston Bridge is interesting in that you can stand on the bridge while a ship is going past and you can look down on the ship. emergency diesel generator near each canal facility. Here it is in the building under the west side of the bridge. So a little history. It's called the Homer Bridge because there used to be a town called Homer which was essentially paved over when the canal went through and when the skyway was constructed. The Garden City Skyway, Bridge 4A, carries the Queen Elizabeth Way over the canal. It's up in the air, it's 50 yards up in the air. This was completed in 1963 because super highways shouldn't have lift bridges. At the time the center span was placed, at its core was the largest single piece of steel forged in Canada up till that point. It's about 60 yards long. At the waterline, you can see the two bridge support piers are protected by four wood and stone cribs to prevent an errant ship from damaging the bridge. The bridge support piers themselves also have wooden bumpers as further protection. 
Under the west end of the Skyway, there is a memorial for four workers that died in 1993 when a scaffolding for maintaining the Skyway Bridge collapsed. Here's some history on the name Garden City. This name is rooted in the region's agricultural heritage. From the 1850s, the narrow strip of rich farmland between Lake Ontario and the Escarpment, from Hamilton to the Niagara River, used to be known as the Garden. Fruits do well here. Grapes, cherries, peaches, plums. Fruit that don't grow elsewhere in Ontario. So St. Catharines adopted the slogan, the Garden City. The name did not originally refer to flower gardens. The spot is the St. Catharines Museum and Welland Canal Center. There's plentiful parking. There's an outdoor viewing platform overlooking Lock 3. It overlooks the lock and the ships in it. Looking north, you can see the Garden City Skyway and the Queenston Avenue low-level bridge. Looking east and southeast, past the lock and the waste weir, there is a large pond. The pond is just to increase the surface area in the canal section between lock 3 and lock 4. So the museum building museum admission is by donation with a suggested donation of five dollars. It has indoor washrooms and drinking water. It has some indoor educational displays about ships. It has a scale model of Lock 3 in railroads and scale. Most of the museum is about the city's history and there's a section for lacrosse. There are outdoor features as well at the museum. There's a memorial for 137 of the workers killed during canal construction. There are some anchors. There's a smallish propeller from a third canal ship. This propeller is from a ship constructed in 1930 named W.M. Eddington. It was converted to a barge in 1984 and the propeller was no longer required. The bulk aggregates barge Niagara 2 was sunk to form an artificial reef at Little Cove near Tobermory in 1999. Other things here, it has a sheave, a big wheel from a vertical lift bridge. There's a much smaller sheath, and there's a life-size outline of a second canal lock. We're going to visit the Glendale Bridge. It's Bridge 5. The counterweights are on cables and come down when the bridge goes up. During canal design, the original plan was to use bascule bridges exclusively. Later, designers flip-flopped and went with some vertical lift bridges, especially in between locks. The ones at locks, they put bascule bridges. Because of this change, 
There was minor rework in some bridge pilings that had already been constructed. On the south sidewalk, you may notice white painted rectangles on posts. These mark the Bruce Trail, a walking path from Niagara Falls, 550 miles to Tobermory, up on Lake Huron. If you look north, you can see a tie-up wall on the approach to Lock 3. And if you look on the east shore, south of the bridge, you can see the GM plant, which makes engines and transmissions. South from here, you can see two lock chambers, lock 4 east and lock 4 west, the bottom layer of the flight locks. South, crossing the canal, just before the lock chambers, you can see two bascule bridges that carry the CN main line over the canal. CN double-tracked their main lines. CP's main lines are all single track, so they have to schedule passing trains more carefully. South, between the two lock chambers, there is a pier on which there are stop logs and a stop log crane. Stop logs are used to support winter maintenance to stop the water flow near certain gates at locks 4, 7, and 8. These stop logs fit together like Lego blocks to make a waterproof wall. There's an excellent video illustrating stop log usage and which also demonstrates a professional diver at work. Along the west shore, there's a decrepit wooden tie-up wall that was passed over for refurbishing. Also along the west shore, you can see a white and blue thing like a water tower. It's actually a surge tank. The gray two-story building underneath the surge tank is the main electrical generator for the Seaways equipment. The water intake for the generator is just above lock 7. The water flows in a pipe past lock 7 into the surge tank and then it flows down into the generator. The purpose of the surge tank is to level out variations in water pressure before it flows into the generator. Here's another emergency generator. Near the power building, it, there's a little shoulder space on the west side where you can stop. You can get a closer view of the decrepit wooden tie-up wall, the power building, the surge tank, the rail bridges, and the stop locks. Looking west, you can see the headquarters of Seaway Management. For a good overview of the two Lock 4 lock chambers, you can walk south for 150 yards, follow the Bruce Trail, where it crosses a gravel service road, you can follow it north for a bit, just follow the Bruce Trail. Don't go onto the train tracks, they will kill you. The next spot is a parking lot at Welland Canal Parkway at Lock 5. So from here you can actually see three pairs of lock chambers. Your parking is now within Thorold, you're out of St. Catharines. On a good day you can see three ships at the same time here. Just watch the real-time AIS ship website to time your visit. To the south, on the east side of the roadway, there are two plaques. One is a poster plaque describing the flight locks, and one is a metal plaque describing the Welland Ship Canal. On the west side of the road, there's a spot here you can get onto the Welland Canal Trail as it chugs uphill here.
This is Thorold's Box 7 Visitor Center and Thorold Museum. There's a tiny bit of parking. The Visitor Center itself and its washroom are open seasonally from May to October. After you park here, you can walk 60 yards over to the canal. At the canal south of the lock, you can see the lock gates of a sector gate and beyond the typical miter gates. A sector gate is suited to withstand the stresses of winter ice when lock 7 is drained of water in the winter. The building here controls the water intake for the electrical generator down the hill. In October of 1985, part of Lock 7's wall collapsed while a ship was in the lock. The cause was determined to be that the intake pipe here for the electrical generator, the pipe burst, it destabilized the concrete of Lock 7's concrete wall. As a result, the canal traffic was stopped for 24 days. When it reopened, there were 150 ships queued up. It took weeks to clear the backlog. Just south of Lock 7, north of the Turning Basin on the east shore, there's a lonely ridge abutment. It was for the ns t the Niagara-St. Catharines and Toronto Interurban Electric Streetcar connecting St. Catharines to Niagara Falls. There was a swing bridge here over the 4th Canal. There was also an adjacent swing bridge over the 3rd Canal. To the south, you can see the paper mill. It's sort of turquoise colored. And you can see Wharf 7. The paper mill isn't a paper mill anymore. It was closed in 2017. The building is now a government-run, multi-tenant manufacturing complex. It's an experimental business model to attract smaller manufacturing. The open water just in front of the paper mill is the first of the three turning basins in the southern portion. A little east of the paper mill, you may see the top of a titanic pile of coal. This is at the Thorold Industrial Dock, which includes Wharf 5 and Wharf 6. This facility handles self-unloaders bringing dry bulk cargoes, like coal, but it can also handle other cargoes. The Thorold Tunnel goes under the canal. Uh, the Thorold Stone Road goes through the Thorold Tunnel. The tunnel is underground for 450 yards, which is actually five times the canal's width at this point. The tunnel was constructed over three winters and opened in 1967. Walking through the tunnel is, is fun, but it's very loud. The traffic sounds echo. To walk through, you might need to park first. So I'll give you some parking it's somewhat distance, over half a mile, I think. The spillway for the flight locks follows the path of the third Welland Canal. Part of this path is publicly accessible via the Bruce Trail. So I'm going to include it in our tour. This trail is not suitable for small children. There are falling hazards, Parking is near the Glendale Bridge. An alternative, you could park at Wood End Conservation Area and walk across the golf course on the Bruce Trail. I'm going to just assume you parked at the Glendale Bridge. You can walk east along Glendale. There's a traffic light where you can cross to the south side. The Bruce Trail follows the south side of Glendale East for a quarter mile. After a bridge over a road, there's a bridge over the third canal, and the trail immediately turns right through a gap in a chain link fence. The Bruce Trail follows the east side of the canal for half a mile. 
It passes four locks of the Third Welland Canal, offering fantastic views of the canal, the impressive stonework, and the wild land beyond. The trail comes close to the top of the lock wall along these locks, which is the obvious falling danger. At one lock wall, there is a square hole, roughly two feet square, which appears to go down, down to the water level. On your left as you're walking to the east, there's a strip of wild land and then a golf course. While there are woods and brush around now, at the time the third canal was in use, there wouldn't have been any wood and brush. Everything was kept short. Besides keeping things clear f for working the canal, everyone used fires for warmth. In every building and on ships, scrounging wood and leaves was a way of life. As you walk, you will pass a few bollards, ship tie-up spots in the middle of the forest. By the time of the third Welland Canal, every boat was motorized or towed by a tug. The first and second canals are a little different. They had a towpath along the one side for horse teams to pull sailing ships. Along the way, you may see an abandoned car in the water near the west shore. That's not a designated parking spot. Just before the rail bridge, the Bruce Trail turns left, which is east. Nearby here, there is a feature you could visit if it's not golfing season. If it's golfing season, you shouldn't trespass there because we don't want the golf course people mad at the Bruce Trail hikers. The Bruce Trail, when it turns east through the golf course, it goes down a hill and crosses a paved golf cart path. If you follow that golf cart path north for 50 yards, where there's three golf tees to the middle tee. You can see behind that middle golf tee in the canal dike, you can see a concrete tunnel entrance, which is permanently bricked up. This is the tunnel for the old St. David's Road under the third Welland Canal. There is a west entrance for the same tunnel, but it's definitely beyond where we can get to. Back up on the canal side where the Bruce Trail turned east, you can see to the south there's a walking path. It goes to the train swing bridge. I don't think you should go that way because you'll be trespassing on the seaway land and if you go near the train bridge then you'll be trespassing on sea and land. Both of these are federal crown corporations and they don't mess around with security. And there are extra hidden falling dangers. Nobody is fixing up or warning about dangerous holes that have developed in the last 50, 70, 80 years. And you will be isolated from passers-by. The only way they'll find your body is to watch to see where the turkey vultures land. The train bridge is a double-track swing bridge constructed in 1895. Like most such bridges, it is symmetrical about the center post upon which it rotated. When the fourth Welland Canal opened, there was no longer a need for this bridge to rotate and it was fixed in place. West along the rail line, beyond where we can get to, there is another tunnel, the St. David's Road Tunnel underneath the rail line. I'm going to stick in some old pictures of the Meriton Tunnel, the rail tunnel. It's no longer legal to go there. Don't go there. It's not safe.
That's all I've got. Comments are welcome. Check out the other videos. Thanks for your time and I'll see you by the canal.